Sun Tzu was a general and a military strategist who lived during the Eastern Zhu period of ancient China. In his highly influential book, The Art of War, Sun Tzu provides a definitive framework of how to engage in warfare when battling enemies. Comprising of 13 chapters, with each chapter covering a different element of warfare, it has gone on to shape the way conflicts have been fought for thousands of years by influencing some of the most notable military leaders to have lived in recent times, such as Napoleon Bonaparte and General Douglas MacArthur. You could say that warfare and athletic competition are similar, in that the objective is to defeat the opponent. Of course, we know that the main difference between the two is that in one, you are required to kill your opponent, whereas in the other, you need to score more goals than your opponent. But luckily, we won't need to worry about that minor variation for this video. But before we get more into the video, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date with future content. If not, dropping a like to support the channel would definitely go a long way. Either way, if you're here, I appreciate you taking the time out to watch my videos. Now, where were we? Ah yes, Sun Tzu, Art of War, Sports. Sun Tzu's most famous quote in The Art of War implies that information regarding your enemy, and more importantly, knowing yourself as combatants, is crucial when engaging in warfare. And I quote, If you know neither yourself nor the enemy, you will succumb in every battle. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. End quote. Before we go on to explain how coaches can apply this quote to their own team, it's important to realize that this quote is described as a military calculus where generals should take into account anything and everything that could affect the probability of winning a theoretical battle. With this being said, a coach must know his team's own weaknesses and what to do to protect themselves against their opponent. They must know their strengths and apply them in the most appropriate and efficient way possible. But that is only half of the idea that Sun Tzu envisaged. It is also of vital importance to have knowledge of your opponent's own dispositions. How will they attack? How will they defend? What are their strengths and how can they be rescinded? What are their weaknesses and how can they be easily exploited by knowing one's own corresponding strengths and weaknesses? In a practical sense, and let's use football as an example, because that's what we're all about here on this channel. If the opponent is weak in the air, then it would be advisable for a coach to draw focus on bettering his team to execute attacking plays in the air during particular moments, such as set pieces or getting crosses into the box as a means of exploiting their weaknesses. We can venture even deeper with Sun Tzu's teachings by looking at each individual player as a separate entity. How does the player contribute to his team individually? What are their strengths, weaknesses, and how can they be opposed, providing players with foreknowledge to better their intuition during the game? An example we can use to illustrate this is the epic Champions League semi-final match between Jose Mourinho's Inter Milan and Pep Guardiola's Barcelona back in 2010. In his masterclass video with the coach's voice in 2019, Mourinho revealed that when in defence, his team's primary objective was to prevent Messi from getting on the ball easily. All Inter players were given the responsibility of marking Messi by holding a compact shape while defending zonally. This means that whenever Messi decided to venture out of his opponent's zone, another Inter player would immediately mark him, often leaving the mark from another attacker in order to do so. Inter Milan won 3-1 that night, making it one of the greatest underdog stories in the history of the Champions League. And to add, Sun Tzu even had the idea of swarming your opponent, 2400 years before Jurgen Klopp popularised it at Borussia Dortmund with his gang pressing style. I think it's fair to say that this guy was way ahead of his time. Luis Philippe Scolari also outwardly disclosed that he greatly relied on Sun Tzu's lessons to aid him in his preparations for the 2002 World Cup with Brazil, which he eventually went on to win. He said that he even put passages of the art of war underneath his players' doors during the night to invigorate their spirit in the morning before a match. But Sun Tzu's teachings can even be applied to concepts beyond sport. Evan Spiegel claimed that the art of war played a prominent role in the overall success of his famous phone app, Snapchat. Neil deGrasse Tyson states that every intelligent person on the planet should read the book right now if they haven't, with Dan Locke also recommending the book to people who feel they are behind in life. Ultimately, Sun Tzu's ancient teachings present modern day sports coaches with a primitive guideline in how to tactically approach an opponent. Sun Tzu teaches us how to pick and win our battles, and advises us to measure and calculate, to know our opponents and ourselves, so we can be victorious before even making a move. Although Sun Tzu's lessons may have not directly influenced all modern day coaches, it can surely be said that his teachings have profoundly shaped the way we proceed against our enemies.
Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to buy Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, I've left a link down in the description below so you can read it for yourself. I highly recommend this book to anyone who hasn't read it, so make sure you check it out if you can. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next vid.